Calypso was always something that was looked at carefully, that was censored. It was censored on two levels. One, the, the business of smut, that is the treatment of the topic of sex, either openly or even behind metaphor and behind a mask. Mm -hmm. If you look at the pattern of censorship from the 30s, they were looking for that. And they were looking at the possibility of rebellion and violence and they had in mind particularly the Butler riots mm -hmm. and uh, the possibility that similar types of riot could take place. Mm -hmm. And when Williams came, Butler was still on the scene. Right. And he made a particular effort to distinguish between his type of intellectual politics and Butler's, <laughs> Butler's politics and at the same time to wipe Butler out of the picture. Um, the worst thing that he did in that respect was to send bailiffs or whatever to move Butler out of some, some little house that he was living in um, on state property or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, <laughs> you know, then, when George Weeks emerges, right. Williams decides to bring back Butler in order to eliminate Weeks. To the power play. Yes, you know, that Weeks was not really representative of this working class. But you, see, but you see, my question, my question really has to do with if you you trying to develop this national culture, really this foundation is national culture for mm. independence. How do you still pursue this business of banning things and so on when the basis of that action of speaking out is the basis upon which the, the culture finds its identity, the, 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 the people find their identity, and, and that becomes a problem for you at, the, at your course purposes? Probably. <laughs> but, but Williams would not have seen it in that way. Yeah. Williams would have seen that he had a vision and that the rest of Oya <laughs> were... They don't understand. They don't understand anything. Yeah. You know? Um, when he said, when the speech that he gave about, you know, but is his supporters representing a hostile and... a hostile and um, something, recalcitrant, recalcitrant minority. minority yeah. Williams is actually quoting Nehru. <laughs> but they said they won't understand that. No, 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 yeah. and they, as, as far as Badis was concerned, and as far as a number of the Indians in Williams' own party, including um, fellow Dr. Mahabir, mm -hmm. concerned, that um, Williams, as far as they were concerned, was openly expressing a racist position against Hindus. Now, I thought, I've always thought that to be very simplistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Williams was, Williams saw the countryside as being a place that bred and lived in ignorance. Mm -hmm. That's how he saw him. And he felt that the way to deal with this ignorance was to send out these peripatetic uh, workers mm -hmm. who would be giving lectures on the weekend to illuminate the dense darkness of the countryside. <laughs> of the countryside. <laughs> of the, of the countryside. Um, now, if you were living, happened to be living in the countryside, you would resent you would resent this kind of patronizing approach. But that's how we saw it. So when you get Calypsonians singing out against the dock, mm -hmm. um, 
he simply wants to understand. Mm -hmm. It's because I educate or yeah. That how you think you can. Isn't that, isn't that kind of reaction and that those cross purposes that is responsible for the kind of lame energy of the calypso now as a as a as a, as a way of speaking out as a protest? Well, I don't know. I don't know that there's any lame energy at all. Mm -hmm. um, the recent work I was I have been doing has been on looking at the emergence of chutney soca. Now, Chutney Soka, <laughs> I will call Chutney Soka, but uh, a music that blended Indian folk music with whatever else was going on in the Trinidad and the Guyanese and the Surinamese communities. Um, that had been taking place long before. In Guyana, they call them blend songs. Mm -hmm. Blend songs. That's, you know? You treat me like a dog, you treat me like a dog. But Benjamin, my darling, I love you till I die. You treat me like a dog. <coughs> that blend song. <laughs> um, people like the song, people sing the song. The song was dealing with the reality of a people, in this, in, the, in, the, in this case, uh, domestic problems between man and woman, but in spite of how Benjamin is treating her, mm -hmm. she still loves him till she dies. Um, a, a situation that we, uh, we frequently meet up right now, that, I mean, literally the woman dies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, these songs existed before. Um, more than that, at quite different levels, the fusion of uh, Indian music and other music, jazz for example, was taking place in the 50s and 60s, Indo-jazz fusions mm -hmm. by Joe Harriet and Johnny Maya. Jo Joe Harriet was um, a Jamaican, um, I think he was an alto saxophonist. Sheikh Keen yeah, played yeah. a flugelhorn yeah. in that combination. Coleridge Good was a Jamaican bass player. And they were playing this raga music, mm -hmm. um, blending Indian music with jazz. People playing sitar, people playing tabla, and this kind of thing. And I was hearing this thing when I was in England, doing Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying, it's a for Conrad. And I was saying, but we in the Caribbean should be producing this music. I mean, how come it have three Caribbean musicians producing blend music in England, which they somehow can't produce but, but in the Caribbean. But you're hitting up on a very significant point there, because I, if I go to Brooklyn Mass or Notting Hill Carnival, yes. those carnivals are very Caribbean here all there, but if you go to any one island, yes. it's just the island. Yes. And, and so it's easier to get together in, an, know, in, in, in New York or in London. Yes, that's right, when you're in exile. Yeah. When, you're, when you're away from, Not, you know, from we home. Have, we, have, we don't even have proper transport between the islands. Between yeah. The yacht and no, no, definitely no sea, proper sea transport. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, we, you never hear about Galleons Passage? <laughs> Somewhere in Mexico, you know. It's gone, it's in Panama. It's in Panama, right? Yes, it's waiting to go through the canal. <laughs> <laughs> it will get here by December. You, you watch, you watch and see. <laughs> so, um, and then the trouble starts. <laughs> no, the trouble but continues. But the, the point is, though, that... that um, the change in, in, in the whole independence thing and the reaction to um, the, the protest in the culture, what you are saying is that that has less to do with the reaction of the new authorities mm. to 
to, to, to whatever perceived threat there may or may not have been, mm -hmm. and more to do with just the change of the time, the change of migration patterns, the, 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 yeah, the, the, uh, the, the emergence of mm -hmm. all the more, the, 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 the more confidence in East Indian communities uh, and so on? Yeah, well, all kinds of things. Williams never believed that we had any real culture from which to build ah, anything. Ah, that, that is a fundamental question. And I mean, it's interesting. He wrote an article called The Politician and Culture mm -hmm. in 1958, the same year of the, 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 the Federation. Yeah, but the same year that he, he had the fracas with bodies and, oh, oh, right, and right, so right. on. Mm -hmm. It's interesting what gets focused on. <laughs> you got the, the focus on the recalcitrant minority, a focus that has lasted up to today. Mm -hmm. But you don't get the focus on an article like the politician and culture, which is essentially saying, Williams is saying, but what do we have when we consider this question of creating a national culture. He says a little, but not much. So we have a few fragments. And if we handle these fragments carefully, over time something might emerge. But what we do have is a Western culture. And we have to learn all the elements of this Western culture until we can confront it, I suppose, with something indigenous. But that indigenous thing cannot be forced. It can only emerge slowly. Yeah, no, 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 no. What is, what is clear to me in that is that the kinds of eyes and the kinds of lens that he would have been looking at it through, whatever was indigenous, he would not have been able to see it. No, he would have seen it, but he wouldn't have been able to give it <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any real kind of value or something yeah, which will grow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when he had to launch the uh, radio station, I forget which one it was, he didn't use no steel band music. Right. <laughs> he, he, you know, uh, he, he might have liked steel band music. He did not use it. He, he, he used uh, some kind of orchestral music. Yeah. Um, the, the, the point about it is that... But do you, think, do you think it was ever really possible for a guy like William, for those guys, given, given the colonial background and so on, to deal in any other way? I keep thinking that it's not possible for them to have done... You know, even, even say, take somebody like Chedi Jagan, mm. who was supposed to be radical on the other side and so on, a real radical and Marxist. Mm. He was a kind of orthodox kind of you know, Leninist kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, just, you know, and, and then of course see the, the, the smart, smart Alec Burnham kind of out with him. Um, <laughs> yeah. well. So it just seemed to me like that, that, that they were trapped in a time when what the, what the West Indies needed, they couldn't really see what was on the ground in a way that they could, you know, nurture it or, or I know they did all sorts of things, mm -hmm. and the, the, the easiest thing to do was to look at the more visible performative aspects yes. of the lo of local folk culture, yes. and uh, to encourage these things to grow. Yes. Um, hence, you know, steel band and calypso and limbo and whatever else you well, hear all the uh, that, that was superficial though what that, that 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 there were processes for instance if you take the pan hmm. there are processes in how the pan works and how even how a panorama piece comes about hmm. that, that have to do with how people interact how people feel good about themselves how they produce something they could feel good about and those processes are never invested in what was invested in the kind of superficial representation of the steel band or the calypso rather than the process that was 
that people had gone through mm -hmm. in creating it and through which they had survived. You know, it seemed to me that, that, that some, yeah. and, and maybe well, that is what they're not capable, capable of seeing. Well, yeah, but yeah, but, but how how are they going to? To encourage this thing, yes. No, I'm, I'm not even reaching to encourage. I'm just seeing, seeing it and saying, this is the struggle. <laughs> this is the struggle. Um, the, and and, and, and see, asking the same question that you're asking. Yes, I know. But they're, 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 this, they're, 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 this, um, the internals of, of, of culture, mm -hmm. the way in, in which culture grows out of the Caribbean belly, as, mm -hmm. as um, David, David Rodder says. Yeah. It is very good that our politicians know, too little, <laughs> know little about that, <laughs> or else they would, I see what you mean. they would mash that up too. I see what you mean. Yeah. They are better able at grasping the externals, like, mm -hmm. Yep. You build an art stand. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this thing about buildings. <laughs> <laughs> what goes into the buildings. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> but, really but produce a building, produce yeah, a structure. Yeah, yeah. They, are, they are better able at doing that kind of thing uh, than at dealing with the guts of the thing. And I'm, I, and I'm saying I'm, I'm glad that, nice. you know, that there is this fundamental ignorance <laughs> you know, and absence of imagination. Um, what I feel needs to be encouraged is creative research. Right. Um, you know, um, the packaging and repackaging of what is being produced. So you have done, I mean, the, 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 uh, it's a massive body of work, but it's, it's, a lot of it is a serious analysis of, of popular culture, primarily looking at the Calypso and so on. And, and it's, 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 it's in many ways unprecedented. Like you showed us a way to look at the Calypso, a way mm. to analyze the Calypso, a way to understand the Calypso, mm. hence a way to understand ourselves. Mm. But so much of this work, like my estimation, has been ignored by so much of, of the society. I mean, how many, how many folks, how, ma how many leaders, how many politicians, how many teachers come and sit down and talk to you and, and really well, try to grapple with what it is you've been trying to, to Well, I don't us? know. Politicians, none. <laughs> uh, but you see, I ain't so sorry for that. <laughs> <coughs> but various individuals mm -hmm. Yeah, have been impacted by all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that they don't tell me that. Right. I'll give you an example. I'm at a conference in, uh, in Miami or Fort Lauderdale in, I don't know, about 2005, 2007, mm -hmm. 2009 even. And I think it's called Archaeologies of Black Memory. Archaeologies of Black Memory. <laughs> yes, of real names, you know. <laughs> and I... real begin. <laughs> what? I hear of Fella and he is dealing with a jazz theme um, an avant-garde jazz pianist, Cecil Taylor. Mm -hmm. But he died the other day. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, Cecil, he died mm -hmm. a month or so ago. Okay. Yeah. Cecil Taylor and uh, Katian Williams, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. but, but this is, this is, this is a, a completely different type of musician. Yes. Yeah. And I was quite amazed that there was any dialogue between um, somebody like Taylor and, and this very, very, very traditional uh, blues pianist. Mm -hmm. But as he presented uh, something 
struck me as familiar, right? Not a certain way it was. And after he had finished presenting and, and having coffee and so on and chatting with him, I said, um, uh, you ever, ever heard about Camel Bassett? Mm -hmm. He said, yes. He said, your pathfinder is one of my Bibles. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the connection. You, can kill, you could have killed me dead. Uh, I mean, I, I sensed mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. but, but I don't understand the... the, the what you right, well, I sensed that I was hearing myself being played back through another voice. Yeah, he, had, okay. he, had, he had read your stuff and was using yes. using it as a kind of a grid yeah. to, 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 to look at terms at what yeah. it's about. Okay. It's a no, my thing is that you know, I would have expected such a person to come and pull me aside and have a whole talk with me. Yes. <laughs> Introduce himself and say... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I read the thing, no! <laughs> I had to. Yeah, you dig him out. I had to dig him out, <laughs> and it and it, and it, it didn't go very far. The conversation yeah. didn't go very far. I give you another example. After I did those twenty-six half-hour programs from until the seventies, between nineteen seventy-two and seventy-three, um, well. A whole heap of people, no, I shouldn't say a whole heap, but uh, in strange circumstances, people um, recognize me through my voice. Mm. Um, you know, you go to do something and you, you know, say, I know that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I used to hear you on the radio, right? Right, right. right. So you impact people in, right, in, different in all sorts of different ways. Yeah. Um, then there was a fellow named Danny Jagan and somebody else, two radio people, um, and they did a, a nicely compressed version of the history of, Cal of Calypso. They did it when I remember Clive Pantin was minister. Yeah, yeah. And they did it to be circulated in schools. Right. And they invited me to the um, launching of it. Um, it was happening at the same time that they were, uh, RCB was uh, recognizing Growling Tiger. Mm -hmm. So, Danny Jagan tells me afterwards, he says, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad to meet you. <laughs> he said, you know, we couldn't, we, we couldn't do these programs <laughs> without, <laughs> with, without, without your, um, from the to the 70th series. Yes, yes. I said, I know, I know, you've taken the whole series and kind of shriveled it down. You package it very nicely. Um, I said, but um, why are you telling me this? Why you don't tell, why you, why you don't tell the fellas at the Royal Bank? Mm -hmm. I said, I just finished this book on Calypso and Society. And I'm looking for some sponsorship. I'm looking for a little bit of help. And you can't. A $5,000, a $10,000. Mm -hmm. um, and any, anything you say at this time, <laughs> you know, might, might mean, might, might mean I, I, I get a little help. Um, I had prepared my proposition, 10 pages of it, and I went to Audley Walker. Mm -hmm. Audley Walker is a Bajan, you know. Audley Walker is a Bajan? Audley Walker was a Bajan. Mm -hmm. And he was running with Ku. Right, right, right. And Audley Walker said, well, um, you can see what you can do. And I said, 
So with Co, actually sponsored me three thousand dollars. <laughs> As a result of um... all this, <laughs> this, this thing, <laughs> I must take up their proposals. <laughs> You know how many different sets of people I go to Neil and Massey Foundation and so all that. So, but you see, this is, this is exactly and the point. This is exactly the point. But these are people who say they are helping culture. Exactly. They're helping Danny Jagan, who take taking my thing. Yeah. And telling me he glad he beat me because <laughs> he couldn't do his thing without my thing. <laughs> and you can't get no sort of for your thing. I can't get a cent. <laughs> I can't get a cent out of. Mr. Chan, Chan, I think that. Yeah. Was Scotia. Scotia Bank. Mm. Yeah, it's of, it's of this Scotia. Chan and. But, that, but that is exactly the point I'm making. <laughs> which, 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 which really brings me to, to um, the other retirement project Musing Mazes, Muses Margins. Uh, by Daniel, what's the next name? Lions Den? Daniel, the, the, the Daniel Frederick Gordon. Daniel Frederick Gordon Rowley. Uh -huh. tell, tell, tell me about this this project, this fascinating project, which, which borders on a kind of um, fiction writing, well, sort of well, biographical. Anything you write about yourself years after is fiction, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because you only remember certain things that you right. want to remember, or certain things that you want to put in a particular kind of order to suggest that they have meaning when in fact they may have none. Um, <laughs> well, also, you also talk about the, 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 the Daniel Frederick Gordon uh, as three different people, which we don't want to talk about too much because that might have a certain degree of mental illness. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but but I, mean, I, I, I find I, that I, fascinating because it's not the kind of writing that we've grown accustomed to getting from you? Well, no, because I have not been too concerned with writing about myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been really concerned. My mission has been to, to, to deal with the writing and the other forms of expression of my generation. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only thing I could do, right, exactly. <laughs> you know. Yeah. If you have all these people around you, some are writers, some are musicians, some are painters, and so on, um, and you've had the privilege of meeting a whole number of these people, um, and you and, know what? You want and, to have the gift for a certain kind of expression. Or yes, that word. is what remains from after the steam. steam <laughs> after, I, I, after the steam, I, right, right. Yes, I, what's left I, of the calling? Yes, I had, a, I had, a, I had a set of words <laughs> or the songs of words. So my th my question has been, why not put together words to deal with Williams mm. to explain what CLR means? to you, or what Naipaul means to you, mm -hmm. what Walcott means to you, what Kamal Brathwaite means to you, what Laming means to you, Louise Bennett. So, uh, so you, one wrote about writers that one had met over a period of years in different contexts, for example, in the Caribbean Artist Move, mm -hmm. Movement in London. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one had met them at conferences, well, they live in all sorts, all sorts of contexts. And uh, Camo has a collection of poetry, a poem called The Words Need Love, too. <laughs> uh, what, what I think he means is that you write these words and uh, if people do not read the words, like the words, love up the words and uh, form a relationship with the words, talk about it, then what you're, you're writing is mm -hmm. kind of useless, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So I try to give as much love, I suppose you can call it, as I could to the writers of my generation. There are probably too many writers of my generation. We write too many things. Right. Um, but I, I try my best. Um, the rest that I have not written about is because I got 
just got tired. Mm -hmm. And a real, 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 <laughs> but I, I, I mean, and I look at my CV. Yeah. I you get tired. I get tired, yes. Because <laughs> I say, what was I doing? <laughs> this and then that and then that. And but this, but this uh, amusing thing. It, it. I mean, it's the first time I'm encountering a, a, a openly poetic voice, mm. um, and and it, it it's fascinating because it has it, it's it's mythic it's 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 um it's dramatic it's you know it, it's it's amazing it's, it's just fun it's, obviously it's obviously just fun it's, it's just fun it's just fun and um i had started writing down my dreams mm -hmm. so the bits and pieces that i could remember um the reason why i i started doing that too, was, was um, I had a feeling that whatever was taking place in the subconscious <laughs> through the dreams had to be far more interesting mm. than the tediousness <laughs> of my day-to-day -day life. Right. So let me jot these things down. And over the years, uh, you know, they, they told a fascinating internal story. Mm -hmm. and yeah, because it goes back some years, I realized. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I... I had always had problems trying to locate that piece that I did, um, The Chronicles of Daniel. Uh-huh, right, uh, right. What would I do with it? Yeah. No, I didn't. That, 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 that's a piece on growing up. On, on well, on it was a piece. Really, it was really meant to be a piece on metaphor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jean Antoine Dunn, mm -hmm. being one of my lovely students, was coordinating or organizing a seminar occasion, a symposium dedicated to um, Father Devatai. 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 He wrote the book on Miss Miles, actually. Yeah. Huh? He wrote the book on Jean Miles. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, not that one. <laughs> the, other, the other one. The other one. <laughs> was really my very good friend. Yeah. And, um, but he, he had begun to you know, the oh, Alzheimer's and things I began to set in. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't quite there, but some days he was on, some days he was off. And she, he had written some books, small books, illustrating something called Lexio Divino. That is, uh, a way of reading the Bible as, um, I don't know, as text, as narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, and, and she asked me to do something on metaphor. I don't know what goes on in Jean's head. <laughs> <coughs> but when she loaned me some of his writings, I said, okay. I can do something um, in which I read my own life as a metaphor. Right. So I'll take excerpts from my life, most of them quasi-religious in a way, and I will try to interpret my life as a metaphor. Mm. So let me take my school days right. and I'm dealing with the, the, the priests the priest that I met <laughs> growing up, <laughs> you know, the question of the father figure, mm -hmm. father, mm -hmm. father, mm -hmm. my own father, mm -hmm. the headmaster in school. Right. Right. And I saw 
one thing linking all of these fathers was licks. <laughs> 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 Punishment. Right. <laughs> you know?